message. Women are the mothers of the church and daughters of the Lord, and are primary and are primary nurturers of Christian growth and ethics. Thank you for your time today to gather and celebrate God's always great grace. I want to leave you with this message. To always remember the meaning of Martin Luther's rose that he freely gave to all. The rose is here and there. The heart is the center of the white rose to show that faith brings joy, comfort, blessedness, and peace beyond that of the world. The background of rose is sky blue to show that this joy in the spirit and in faith is the beginning of the heavenly joy to come. The red heart with the black cross at the center should remind us that the righteous live by faith in Christ crucified. Surrounding the sky blue field is a gold ring to show that happiness and joy in heaven has no end but lasts forever. Just as gold is the highest, most noble, and precious metal. Remember to share the meaning of Luther's role in your life to others. Let me wag up for a minute. <coughs> Better to gather one body in the women. First Corinthians 12, 14 to 26. Blooming blessings. Our annual spring tea. Sunday, March 24, 3 to 5 p.m. Lutheran Women Missionary League. Now, May we have our location by Mrs. Shante Everett. And thank you, Lady David, for the beautiful prayer and that awesome welcome story.
because he lives. I know I haven't heard you all. You know, for our annual tea, I hope that you all leave here today feeling inspired and with a clear sense of your God of purpose. Every year when we have our tea, it's such a beautiful, spiritual, endeavor that we, I know for myself, I'm speaking for myself, I know I'm inspired to go out and continue the work of the elderly males. And the elderly males here, uh, what it means to me, what I like about it is how the work that we do overseas and even here is um, when you see us put on a program, um, it's celebrating. It's just like celebratory <coughs> overall. And that brings us to our message. And you know, um, if you like me, I like to be shaken with. I like to be human. I like to be inspired. And we got somebody here today that's going to do it all. They got it. She's going to do it all for us. She's going to have our soul moving. She's going to move our soul. And the young lady that I'm talking about is none other than our own Mrs. Lachey Derby, my niece. So, here she Good evening. Good evening. 
my prayer and hold up to all of the wonderful things that they say. It is an honor to be alive. It is an honor to be breathing, to be in the house of the Lord today. Although we all strive for perfection, none of us are. But when we wake up every morning, we should be grateful that God has given us another opportunity to be a better person. Amen. 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 Our scripture is from 1 Corinthians 12, 14 through 26. My main focus, though, will be verses 18 through 21. It says, but in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. Our theme today is better together, blooming blessing. Praise God, what a challenge. So I approached this several different ways. At first, I decided we would learn better together, ASL, American Sign Language. So you put your hand in front of your chin, and it's like you bite your chin really quickly. Better. Keep your thumb up, take both hands together, like this one. So it's better together. You need to use that later. But better together. Blooming blessings, I did do that. I put in this blooming like this. As I say, I approach it several different ways, so stay with me. This is Paul's argument as he uses the human body as a metaphor for the church. God has given unique gifts and abilities to his children for special purposes in the kingdom of God. We must embrace and fulfill our God-given roles in the church body. Paul's first point is to insist that the body must consist of many different people, each having a function of his own with the church as a whole. For it is only when all the members perform all the functions do we have a body. Each member, don't miss this, each member has a unique, essential, irreplaceable role to play. Paul's second point is because each member has a unique role to play, no member should be envious of the other's role. Everybody can't do everything. We may want to, but we can't. We've each been blessed with our own particular gift. Now this reminds me of the time when I had a plumber to come out to the house and do some repairs. And now the task that he had before him wasn't simple by any means, and actually I expected him to say that the part wouldn't fit or that it would take more time to complete the job. And I'll be honest, I'll be honest with you, he came highly recommended, but I was a little skeptical of his abilities because of a few things. He didn't have on a uniform. He wasn't clean shaven. I don't think he had a name tag on. And I noticed that he carried a heavy country accent and his English was very broken. I mean, I gotta know that the word will convict you. Raise your hands if you know it. Because John 7 24 says, stop judging by mere appearance. So when I walked into the room to see his finished project, I must admit I was quite surprised to see how neat and clean the job was done, and it was done in such a short amount of time. I said, well, he got that to fit in so neatly. He did it so quickly. It looks amazing. And he replied to me ever so swiftly with a big smile on his face. 
That's what I do. From that very moment, his response stuck with me. Immediately, I took his statement and I analyzed it. Sure, I could have said that he was being cocky or arrogant, but it was something about the pride on his face, now. The strength in his voice, his posture, his boldness, let me know that he knew what he was doing. He took pride in his work. This was his passion. His voice was strong when he said it to me, too. I'm like Kevin Hart. He said it in his chest. <laughs> I felt reassured that I had been referred the right man for this job. Now, I said that to say this. You see, as Christians in the garden of life, we go through rainy days, we're being watered. As we go through trials, we're growing. And at some point during our growth, we should learn to see the positivity in other people and stop being so judgmental. And that's us blooming. And when we do that, we see our blessings. And there you have it, blooming blessings. Listen. The most free Christian experience that you can give yourself is to accept other people in their roles and you in yours. I told you earlier, everybody can't do everything. And everybody ain't good at everything either. Do any of you remember the first time you did something in church? You were excited about it, and it came with ease, and it felt good, like you had found your place, you know? I'll give us a moment, because some of us have to think a little further back than others, <laughs> because we lost our passion. There is a condition called church burnout or ministry burnout. It doesn't happen all at once. It happens slowly. Yeah. Comes in stages. You feel it. You know it. I've been there. You get worn out. And sometimes people just get on their nerves. But if we could just revive, resuscitate our passion, for using our gifts to glorify God. Right. Ask yourself, what do I do? What is it that I'm good at? You see, I know my place. <laughs> I've tried out several positions in church. For example, I can cook, but I have no business being back there in that kitchen with some of y'all. I can't handle it. It can get happy back there. Y'all know who all be in the kitchen. You know, it's some people that can run circles around people and handle that kitchen and keep it organized. So if you decorate good, do your thing. Make something out of nothing. Look at this. If you've been blessed with a melodious voice, get up there and sing that song with all of your heart and soul. If you enjoy cooking, Get in the kitchen and work something up. If you're more of an organizer, then you organize that program. Put things in order. If selling ads and fundraising is your thing, get your hustle on. You may prefer cleaning up and straightening the books and working quietly by yourself. And that's okay. Do you. If you like to cut the grass, get out there on your zero turn and turn that yard out. Or you might like to be the one to fix the communion because you know the importance of tasting it first to make sure that it is fresh and of the highest quality. You got some flat communion wine before it. It is best that somebody takes it, you know. No, all of us cannot play the piano. 
or play the drums. But we all make a difference because we're better together. Education way. It doesn't always have to be something physical. There are some of you who have great wisdom. You give others strength and encouragement to make it through. Step into your purpose. You remember the song by Hezekiah Walker, I Need You? The verse says, I need you, you need me, we're all a part of God's body. And the chorus says, you are important to me. I need you to survive. And do you know why? Because we're better together. Stop acting like what you do in church is no big deal when you're doing the work of the Lord. Take pride in it. Go all out. Do a little extra. Put a little razzle dazzle on it. Be bold. Do we do? Y'all bold me on Facebook telling me business. <laughs> Acts 28, 31 says, Proclaim the kingdom of God and teach about the Lord Jesus Christ with boldness. Amen. To God be the Lord. And make it a habit to compliment others when they do their job, when they do what they're doing in the church, right? First Thessalonians 5, 11 says, Encourage one another and build each other up. That grass sure looks good. I mean, you trimmed it all up and edged up, make it look so nice. I hope they turn around and tell you, thank you. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> to God be the glory. Because in church, in a church body, you need someone who can sing, someone to cook, someone to decorate, someone to bring the word of God, to cut the grass, someone to clean up, play the piano and the drums, read the scripture, someone to give out Easter speeches and practice the kids with their praise hands, someone to organize the program, and someone to pray. And whether you like it or not, you must have someone to taste the communion wine and make sure that it's of the highest quality. <laughs> because we're what? Better together. When we work together, we'll see the blessings start blooming. See, we have to set an example as Christians and guide others along the way. Encourage them to use their talents in church because we want, no, we need them to stay. There's plenty of work for you and for me. Find your spot. Find your place. So you can say, that's what I do. With God as our God, we can make it through any weather. And even though we've all been blessed with different gifts, we're still better together. Amen. Amen.
Well, I'm going to initiate that into my vocabulary. Because that's what I do. <laughs> uh, thank everybody uh, on the program. From a Daisy, Tori, Dante, Irene, Camille, Angie, Lachey, for shaking us once again. Ashley, for participating in our program. And now we're going to exit the sanctuary uh, with the continuation of the fellowship hall. We're going to view and be on the side of the auction item and purchase tickets for each of the raffles. And over there we'll have the lesson of the food. So, uh, with that being said, will you please stand and orderly? Uh,